we don't want to be the first one to talk when she goes live. Uh, we're already live. You give us a sign, Angie, when you're actually live. It, I, that was the three, two, that was the countdown. That's what they do in the business, yo. <laughs> we're good. For those of you listening to the Twitch stream, the first thing that came over was, we don't want to be the first one to talk when we go live. <laughs> Oh crap! <laughs> so I utterly failed. Well, I, uh -huh. like I said, you were the first live, one. So if we want to introduce ourselves, let's get this show started. All right, I'm Travis. I am Ezra Hayne, uh, fighter, two-handed or two-weapon fighter. And my goal in life is to destroy. Okie dokie. My name is uh, Harry. Uh... I play good old orc half elf, oh, that. half orc monk, and his sole purpose in life is to destroy phase. Okay, my go. Yeah. Okay, my name is Brian. I'm playing Jorel. He's a human hunter. He's a mix between druid and ranger. His go life is to protect the wilds, which mostly involves killing things. Sean, you're up. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm playing Zyria. I'm with my friend here, the the pseudo dragon. Together, we're trying to end slavery and kill all the drow we can for uh, the injustice that they've done to us. Hi, guys. Uh, this is Bangelerp. Uh My name is Angie, and I am playing Elendra, who is an elven cleric, and she is basically just going around trying to make the world a better place. Also by kidding things. Yeah, also Hi by guys, killing things. I'm Matt. What? What, Angie? Sorry. Also by killing things. You know, no big deal. Yeah, yeah. Murder so, uh, I'm Matt. I play Safiri, who is a preteen halfling whose sole mission in life is to dance around maniacally uh, and just go around having a shit ton of fun. Uh, and that usually involves stabbing large numbers of people and just playing pranks on people. Rogue life. Yes, and I am Roger. I am the dungeon master. I will be playing all of the things that Safiri will soon stab. For those of you who are tuning in for the very first time, well, I guess this is our first stream. Uh, what is saying is this is the first time. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, well, we've 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 streamed to to nobody before. Um, this is a campaign uh, playtest for a module that's coming up on Rule Twenty called the Lands of Belfam. It's an open world system that uses Pathfinder, and this party is the playtest group, obviously, and they run a magnificently fun story-based campaign called the Eben Ring. It started at the beginning of the year. Uh, the founding member was none other than the human uh, Jonathan Everyman Ezra Hain. Um, it started with almost a completely different party other than him, and he has sort of endured all of my slings and arrows and and slimes and ev everything that I've thrown at him, he's, he's made spiders. it all of good spiders. <laughs> yeah, spiders. Uh, the campaign so far has been that this small band of adventurers uh, purchased a tavern on the southern highway in, this, in the Emerald South region of Beltham. They traveled to the uh, tavern known as the Empty Mug, which sits on the highway between the major city of the Four Corners and the merchant town, Blue Kettle. Um, they, to their dismay, arrived to find that it had been taken over by a band of drow, led by the enchantress, Athena. Athena was the drow queen, but she was run out of the underworld when her ex-husband, uh, started uh, stirred up a faction and had her kicked out. She went up into the upper lands and decided to make her kingdom there, only to be met by these brave, daring good doers who kicked her out of her holding. Now, the party is essentially at war with Athena, trying to stop her 
from her plot to take over the world. And their journeys have led them to the wintry wastes known as the Icy North, where they seek to find a magical artifact known as the Soul of the Mountain, something that Dathina wants to get her evil hands on very badly. Now, when we last left the group, they stepped through a portal, and they appeared at the northern gate of a town called Svelgard. On their way north to an ancient abandoned keep known as Orlik's Hold. So the party is going to take it, take the talking stick, as they say. You guys can tell me what it is that you want to do. You have your bearings that were given to you by Safiri. Safiri actually had the intel that led you to believe that this was the place that you should go. So, take it away, and I will tell you whether or not you fail. So, first off, Alendra's going to flop into that snow and do that snow angel that I told you guys she would do. Yes. Awesome. She's home. <laughs> yes, she is home. It's cold. Simple as that. Alright, so, um... We just popped up at the north gate of this city, so I think we need to head south uh, and uh, hit up the city real fast. The first things first, we should go into the city and see what we can find. Okay. Is it actually Svelgard? It is Svelgard. Unfortunately, uh, like I promised you guys earlier this week, the city would be, the map would be made, but it is not yet finished. It It is going to be... Uh, role play. The gates are actually open. You guys left uh, in around midday. You went through the portal around midday. And the city is very different from any other place that you've been. In fact, to call it a city is actually a misnomer. It's a just a very few a small collection of buildings. Uh, they all sort of form a circle that uh, centers around a single large longhouse with a thatched roof. The roof looks like it's very dirty and it's it's very like poorly made, much, much different than all of the rest of your uh, the, the lovely establishments that you're used to. Thank you to whoever's drawing a little map for us. We we may have been attacked by a uh, a very strange creature named Trogdor, I'm just saying. God dang it. It's uh it's I mean you know this that the icy north is just a very barren place. Nobody really wants to live here except for the people who've been up here for generations. The bumpkins. Um, we're simple part. folk. <laughs> uh, actually, Alendra, if if unless you had something else in mind, this is basically where your family is from, and this is where they are. Oh, so they're actually here at home. They're not traveling about. Okay. Well, if they're if they're traveling, then they're traveling. But like, uh, this is where they're all from. Okay, so my family my family is from Svelgard, but there's no guarantee that they're actually here right now. Yeah. Okay. So let's go find information on this so-called fiend that we're both be finding, I believe. Very... Yes, uh, an icy fiend. No, it wasn't an icy. It was a frosty fiend. Okay, yes, frosty. it was alliterative. So... Sorry, I was a little distracted yes. last time. So, yeah, I my intel from my Thieves Guild and my Sneaky People contacts has told me that there is a frosty fiend who has objects which may hold some sort of mystical power to them. Uh, and since this is sort of like on the way to Og's Hammer, which is where we expect to find the soul of the mountain, we think that it's possible that he may have, uh, he may have the frosty fiend, which we don't know what or who that is, uh, may have snagged it and taken it there. Back to his lair. Snagged what? But snagged the soul of the mountain. Okay, I was just making sure Possibly. I understood. Yeah. I mean, he's also been bothering the people in this area and, like, eating up my informants or something like that. They've been disappearing, so that's that's also a problem. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Are you sure your, your um, informants just have just been killed by regular people? For being what they are, <laughs> I, I don't know. We'll find out, won't we? When we walk into the city and <laughs> if there's an ambush. 
Please this watch theory. over. You, uh, you know the lay of the land. Take the lead. Let's go. Me? Well, uh, well, we got to find your contacts, right? Yeah. It seems that they do know some stuff about this area. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Yes. Uh, the Frosty Fiend is the nickname for the mysterious creatoid that has um, basically taken up residence in the hold. The only people who ever go up there are adventurers like yourselves, and none of them have ever returned to tell the tale of the Fallen First Keep. First net 20 of the day. <laughs> it begins. It's, it's, it's going to happen all night long, <laughs> I can tell you right now. Yep. Uh, Alendra, you natural 20 know a strange piece of lore. Uh, I'm going to actually, this is the only clue that I'm going to give you because you, sh you, you probably have already, you probably know what it is that I'm going to talk, be talking about. It is a monstrous creature by the name of Kiranoth. Okay. Kiranoth. Can I get a spell check on that, Raj? <laughs> Kiranoth. Kiranoth. Thank you. Oh, that sounds familiar. Why do I know that? Wasn't that the, <laughs> Wasn't that the white dragon we fought as three of us? Remember in the other stream, the other mini stream thing? Oh, meta. Oh, I think so. Yes, but that is meta gaming. But I think since I rolled the nat twenty, <laughs> I would know this. That's fine. You know that it is a terrifying uh, dragon. Oh yeah. Not only is uh, is he a dragon, but he is the kind of dragon. That would be extremely dangerous in a place like this. He is a white dragon. So is this what people yeah. are calling the the frosty fiend? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> yes. With your natural twenty, I get to. I'll just. I'll just spoil everybody. Yes. <laughs> um, as you can see, I'll, I'll tell you um, the town itself has a few of the amenities that you might want like a ta like there's actually it's it might be called a tavern it's essentially a a, long, a very large longhouse where people go in it's just one giant room where there's an open fire for you to cook your own kill on and then there's a large table where everyone sits at and then there are just like little tiny like bags on the floor where people will like lay down for the night you leave a, a gold coin in the box for the town to collect, and that's basically your rent. My kind of place. Yes, it is extremely rustic. Um, there's very little in the way of uh, heat. Um, thankfully, you guys came prepared, though. You purchased a very expensive set of boots that keep you from losing your fingers and toes. Yep. Um, there is <clears throat> a tiny uh, church, a very small uh, hovel where the uh, religious folk will gather on Sundays. Um, as far as a professional cleric who can give you uh, rituals or uh, anything more than just uh, healing and rest, there's nothing to be found here. Um, there's no magical items that can be purchased. There's not even really the highest quality item that you could purchase as far as equipment is concerned is a piece of uh, masterwork. Equipment. My my people are, are fairly simple. We we don't really need a lot of special things. So. <laughs> well, interestingly, what they need from the land. Interestingly, uh, and Ezra, you'll notice this more so than maybe anybody else. Um, Ralmir, you'll you being from another region, being from the west, you sort of see this too. Mm -hmm. The people from the south, where you all are from compared to these people look like wet noodles these people are beefy <laughs> like they look like even like the the oldest and the weakest there is sinew and uh muscle definition they all look very powerful very stout stout um Proud. <clears throat> yeah there is a gym here um Ralmir, if you uh want to stop in and uh get a good workout in before you go on your adventure, that's possible. 
but uh, this gym is so run down and so ill-used that uh, you you really can't get the same kind of excitement that you could in the in the four corners. Mm. But if you just just chop logs, you can challenge the gym leader. He is a <laughs> huge um, blonde man with a massive blonde beard, and he almost looks like a bear. <laughs> how large he is! <laughs> okay. His name is. That was that was supposed to be a joke, but okay. His name is Fall. His name is Fallgar. Okay. <laughs> all right. So having shared all that information about this lovely little collection of hovels we're visiting um i am going to sort of just break off from the group a little bit i'll take eames with me if uh greenwood wants to spare him yeah eames is walking watching over you to make sure you, one you don't steal stuff and two you don't get killed <laughs> yeah so that's that's sort of what's happening and i'm going to uh i'm gonna just sort of look around for uh my contacts uh would you like a roll for that, Raj? Either it, <clears throat> um, whatever will give you the most. If you're looking for uh, knowledge local, or if you're looking to just kind of like scope the place out, you can do. I'll let you do just a base perception. Jeez, I don't even know what my perception is. Um. <clears throat> oh yes. Oh, I. I. We. We don't know how what it is because <laughs> we know it's so high. <laughs> I think my perception slightly edges out my knowledge local, but uh, unfortunately, I've lost my perception macro. There we go. Okay. So yeah, while you're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look around and chat up people and see what's going on and see if I can find any of my uh, contacts. Um, <clears throat> very quickly, while you're kind of riding Eames around the town, um, there is a. Uh, <clears throat> A rather rangery looking man with uh, very light skin and very white hair. He's wearing kind of a dark gray uh, cloak. And as you just briefly in passing make eye contact with him, he'll do a little gesture, a subtle gesture that the untrained eye would think he's just, you know, picking his nose or wiping in hair, his hair behind his ears. But you know it to be a, uh, a, a, a kind of uh, secret gesture that he also is a guild member. Is he is he old or is his hair just is he he's, just sort of pale? He's, he's a uh, it's he, he's an elven man and like he has the same kind of blonde as Alendra. Okay. Yeah, he looks to be he looks I mean he he, he looks to be in his late twenties, but for all you know, he's... knowledge local are they related? <laughs> are they related? No, they're not related. Okay. Aww. Just, just because we all look alike. Okay, Jesus. So I'm going to I'm going to sort of subtly signal to him. Uh, you know, a place to sort of meet up an inconspicuous area of the town uh, to sort of, like, meet up with this guy. Okay, so sell that to me. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? RP that shit so I'm, I'm just going to sort of, like, <laughs> nod at him and then say, like, sort of loudly, like, oh, come on, Eames, let's look over there. And I'm going to, they're like, you know, I wonder what's behind that building there. And then I'm just going to do, 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 do. <laughs> What could be behind building number one? Okay, so he'll, it's he'll, a goat. he'll roll his eye, he'll roll his eyes, <laughs> and then follow you. And he'll look at you, like, he'll look down on you. Even though you're mounted on this giant wolf, he'll kind of look down on you and kind of put his hands on his hips. And he's going to say, subtle much. And I said, who am I trying to hide from? There are only six people in this whole city. You're not wrong, my friend. What are you doing up here? Uh, we're searching, we heard tell of a very cryptic frosty fiend who we now believe to be named Kiranoth. Um, we're looking to see what we can do about his presence. Hopefully we can eliminate the threat of him to this town once and for all. Uh, but we also we also are in search of certain magical artifacts that we've heard are around here. What do you know of them? <clears throat> He's gonna say, well, Kiranoth is uh, essentially the biggest threat to this region that we know of, and that uh, as far as our interests are concerned, it's too much of a risk for us to even go in there. 
the keep itself is so filled with traps that uh, even advanced uh, acquisitions parties will go in and never come out. Uh, it's rumored that recently a band of humans all wearing black armor and blonde hair actually went in there um, and a, uh, a hunting party from the town actually uh, gave report of them going in and coming back out unharmed. Interesting. So the, you say the whole place is riddled with traps? and it's, yet it's you... a, the, the thing itself is a trap. I wouldn't yeah. even, even with all your skill, I wouldn't go in there. Hmm. I am I am unimpressed by this wimpy looking guild member, um, because uh, yeah, I would have I would have expected him to have a little more chutzpah to him, you know. Uh, <laughs> you can see that so, he's weathered. You can see that he's a tough guy. I mean, yeah. I know that Safiri herself is kind of a troll, but yeah, the reality so I'm gonna, is. I'm gonna ask, you know, why why has your contact with the the guild in the Four Corners been so erratic? What is what has happened to? You? our various informants, what's happened to your network? Well, obviously, as you can see, the guild doesn't have much interest in a place like this, moron. But, uh, from what I keep hearing, there's some kind of war that's getting ready to go down, and most of the guys are actually headed back to the guild itself. I, I don't believe that you are the one who enacts guild policy, sir. You have no say in what is best for the guild. So I'd appreciate it if you held a civil tongue. Thank he's, you for the information. <laughs> he's going to shake his head and he's going to say, if you go up there, it's your funeral. Well, he looks, he is, he's, very, he's very grizzled. He, he doesn't take crap from no one, especially some little, little, little fart like you. Uh, so true. I was a little shit two weeks ago. <laughs> You've been promoted. Ever since you took the ever since you took the black cloak, you uh, yeah, I'm, I'm got promoted little from little shit yeah. to little fart. There we go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of pull back. I'm gonna say. Oh wait, before that, I'm gonna ask him what he knows about Og's hammer. He he's done with you. No, um, he'll he'll say it's uh it's a good place to go if you're looking to get some coin. Um, the uh, hunting party that I told you of, they said that there's some activity from this mysterious black armored band up there as well. If you're looking to get some good treasure, you head up that way and just find your way in. You'll, I'm sure you'll run into a nice uh, batch of trouble that can also be as lucrative as it is dangerous. Alright, so I am going to uh, admonish him to maintain better contact with the guild in the four corners. He, he's because... like, he doesn't listen to you. He's like, who are you again? Get out of here. I try to be intimidating. Wait, that can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me check. Let me check my sheet. Drag you off so you don't like embarrass yourself. My voice squeaks while while I try to be intimidating. I'm like, keep in contact with them. <laughs> you, uh, so the rest of the party, like the rest of the party, has sort of like all kind of gathered in the town, and you just see out from behind a building, Safari just go f flying and just sliding through the mud. <laughs> She picks up her face, and her face is covered in mud. That's right. <coughs> I, I intentionally, I intentionally try, I intentionally put no ranks in intimidate because I was like, it makes no sense for the character to be intimidating. I don't know. Man. Yeah, Good Ames, job, me. Really Ames will return Safari to the party after she ran off to do her shady deeds. I mean, like yep. spiders. All right, you know, I'm done. So I'm gonna I'm gonna return to sort of the general party once they do their thing, uh, and I'm going to pass all the information along to them about what's going on. What are we doing? So we guys? have dragons so we have dragons and um bandits. I could before we have to go to the mountain. Which one do we wanna go first? Well, currently I would say that uh Dathina's plot is probably worse than the bandits right now, even though I fucking hate bandits, but I mean, yeah, they well, the world, you, they did, you did say that those bandits were, you know, blonde with black armor. If you recall, at the meeting, the black armored people who were, you know, saying that they were the ones in power. Remember them? I do. 
Seems to me like uh, it might be something. Hmm. I think you're onto something. Connected. I do. Absolutely. One question though. If the dragon, the supposed dragon has the heart of the mountain, is it safe to leave it there? Or do we have to so try to get it from him? If the if dragon's the... got it, they're going to have just as much problem as we will. So, I mean... Wait, who are the black armored right people again? Could someone refresh? That would okay, be so you remember when... Actually, no, you weren't here that day. Okay, so the yes, day... Al Alendra, she was the one who stealthed in. And there was right. a meeting. Oh, yeah! And the guys... Yes. the three, There were three of them. There was, like, a, a, a woman who was an archer... Uh, a guy who looked like he had a, sh a sword and shield, and then a younger-looking dude a pair who had a man. great sword. A pair of scar also. And a scar. Yeah, and to point point out something that <clears throat> might peak, uh, if Ezra finds out about this, he was wearing all-black armor, a red cape, and he had uh, blonde hair, and he had a big nasty scar on his face where his eye was covered by an eye patch. That was the difference between that and what he actually saw. Ah. Well, Alendra told us all this, and yeah, I, told I told them that that was the guy that I beat up before. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so are these people... He broke your arm. Down to the nitty-gritty. Are these people aligned with Dathina? Yes. Yeah. They are indeed. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. if they... All right, so hear me out here. If they have been going in and out of the keep and, like, unmolested, then it's possible that Dathina and the dragon are also aligned with each other. It would make Which could sense. be problematic. So, it so the dragon could be, could be holding the soul the of the dragon already. <laughs> well, we could always go with the uh, the rogue and the rogue cleric, <laughs> the two sneakiest people. And maybe I'm pretty sure that goes to me, Eames, and Mr. Fury. What? Okay, I'm gonna say we go to the keep uh, and we figure shit out from there. Anyone else got shit to do in the town? No. Nope. Other than a map, no. <laughs> Uh, I can probably go in and ask for a map somewhere in the yeah, town. Yeah, see if you can get us a map with, like, sort of more specialized, like, uh, markers of where things are in the area. Right, right, because it's been a while since I've been home. I don't think I'd recall everything that I need to to lead us around. So, okay. I believe this is our best choice of action. <laughs> so, the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the villagers... There will be a uh, map that's actually available in the Jarl's Keep. A uh, bookkeeper known as uh, Schmelgar will <laughs> give you guys a, a a map for the um, price of 100 gold that will point you to the keep. I'm going to try and talk him down from 100 gold to... <laughs> to 5 gold. To 50. <laughs> to 50. I don't want to short my people. Okay, do you want to roll? I can't roll? decide whether to assist with the diplomacy or to just steal it. <laughs> well, I have a plus and 13 assist. to diplomacy, so... <laughs> I have a 12 to diplomacy, and look how that worked out for me. Alright, first off, Safiri so gets kicked out of the town. Uh, <laughs> you'll get your you'll get your price. You'll get it for 50 gold. Make sure Just another deduct. Monday night for Safiri. <laughs> My people really yep. dislike halflings, apparently. Just another man. Actually, Monday. uh... Um, um, Ralmir will get a bunch of mean looks. Ralm Ralmir will get a Is bunch of, work? uh... Half work? Yeah, he, uh, he notices a lot of prejudice Nobody against him. Me. Well, he's like Santa. <laughs> Stare back. So, with the, uh, yeah, Jarrell, you, you're, you're relieved to see that a village full of huge, mean-looking white people are not <laughs> looking at <laughs> looking at you. <laughs> So That's with, bad, with the assist in my diplomacy role, how does that oh, work? What's that? With the assist in my diplomacy role. Yeah, you'll get it. You'll get it for fifty. Cool. Yeah, Schmel, Schmel, what is what's it? What did I say? His name is Schmel. Schmelgar. Schmelzar. Schmelgar. He'll give you give you uh, uh, clerical advice. He himself was a bit of a support for the Jarl, and um. He will just uh, how to, like give you some tips on how to keep your, keep yourself warm, so on and so forth while you're out there in the wastes. And he warns you to, uh, even though um, 
you were, you're looking to go there to be extremely careful and to know that parties even more powerful looking than yourselves have gone into that place. Okie dokie. I appreciate the Did, did we have a chance to rest? Do you think we should rest for the uh, evening and leave it in the in the first light? I'm going to I'm going to ask the uh, the bookkeeper cleric dude if there's a spot that we can stay because I'm pretty sure that there's I, I do I have a house here in town? Sure. Okay. So, I guess I'm just going to leave the party to my house. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a wooden it's a uh, Kind of like Lincoln Log walls with the uh, sod home, sod roof. It's kind of a long house, and the difference between this house and all the other houses is that the trim has sort of elven carvings in it of vines and leaves, sort of a w- almost warm looking uh, design. And when you go in, it's full of elven cultural baubles and trinkets. There aren't uh, any, like, unmentionables lying around, right? It's been empty for some time. Your whole family is a traveling ministry of some kind, right? Is that well, the backstory? Just, they're traveling merchants. Oh, they're, uh, yeah, so they they don't... All of the furniture, uh, the elven furniture, will be covered when you go in. It looks kind of ghostly. So, obviously, my family has been doing well with their business because they haven't come home yet. So, let me just dust some stuff off so you guys can sit down somewhere. And <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, so, she's going like, to start that. cleaning everything and uh, throw some wood towards the, the, the fire pit that I'm assuming is in the center of the house. It is. Yes. Can I give you a hand, Alindra? If you would be so you, kind. That is would be there so extra firewood? Sure. If there's not, Ezra will just go out and chop some. Oh. Yeah, you can... What the Ezra, fuck, Ezra, when you uh. um, go out outside uh, the walls, um, you can see um, you can see the guard standing post, and he looks at you like he recognizes you, but then he shakes it off like, no, no, not the same guy. And then you will uh, go outside and chop some wood. Um, there's just a big, uh, a big pile of wood outside that the community all sort of share, sort of share. And there is on a stump, a, uh, box where people will leave a silver, maybe a gold coin as part of like the community share. Uh, whenever you take wood, it's just a courtesy to leave something in there. Well, I'd like to, to cut a little extra to leave there so that people can grab some easier and then I'll oh. take some and leave about... 10 goldish. Oh wow. Okay. That was that's a generous donation. And then you come back in and you bring the firewood inside. Um right as you head towards the uh gate, you hear something. You specifically uh roll perception for me. <laughs> I noticed uh... nothing. <laughs> Never mind. I will notice that this is our perception. third crit fail on perception within the past uh, two minutes. Yep. <laughs> yes. And we all rolled ones. Yep. <laughs> We're getting them out of the way now. We're getting them out of the way. Yeah. I That's like true. It. Zeria rolled a one, the lender rolled a one, and Ezra rolled a one. <laughs> Doesn't even count my crit one diplomacy check. <laughs> so. You guys get yourself some rest, and you are ready to go in the morning. Um, the uh, sun will go down, and everybody will shut down for the night, and then the night will go by peacefully. Um, the fire will sort of crackle, and you guys just sort of think of all of the things that have been happening thus far, and all of the things that are yet to come. And then you wake up. There's actually a bird... Uh, to your surprise, a bird chirping. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a special kind of bird known as a rooster. <laughs> that will. That's not, uh, that's not that's special. definitely right? not a chirp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he will. He will uh, abruptly wake everyone up in the town, and very like you kind of look out the window and you can see him very proudly sitting on top of the uh, the Lord's Hall, the Jarl's Hall, and. Uh, 
He's, he looks like a tough chicken himself. <laughs> almost the size of a almost the size of a small dog. Oh Jesus! Elendra's gonna rub her eye and be like, "I did not miss that bird." What do they feed these things? His name is uh, his name is uh, Rothgar. <laughs> Rothgar, Rothgar the <laughs> rooster. Rothgar, R O T H G A R. I know that name. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Great, great, great. Um, so now that it's morning, I think it's time that we do with this keep. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do that. I'm, I'm still confused by the rooster up here. This is a what or what? I wasn't there last. Stay week. coward, respondents. This is n just now, all of like five minutes ago. We learned as a keep. Feel oh, okay. bad guys. Oh, okay, yeah, we're okay. Just okay. Talking I was talking about just what we we just were at. So, Sorry. I will tell you guys the story of your journey, and I'm going to tell you while I play some of the official soundtrack. We're getting railroaded right now. The uh, yes, you are. The uh, the walk through the gates is uh, sort of a muddy um, trudge, and then the road will sort of take you into the woods, and then itself it will sort of disappear um, as you walk through the uh, ice-covered pine trees. The wind will sort of pick up. And it will get extremely foggy very quickly. The uh, terrain, as you guys see it, it's very difficult for you to see maybe even 100 feet in front of your face. I want everybody to do me a favor, and I want you to make some kind of survival or knowledge geography. How about knowledge local? <laughs> mm, yeah, sure. Yeah, no. I wow, I cannot believe you let me do that. But no, okay. you can't do it. That's oh, not that. You, yeah, you you see trees. So you uh, said survival or knowledge geography. Greenwood will actually keep you all on on track, and he will he along with his uh, trusty wolf, with uh, will uh, guide you all safely through the woods, and he sort of because he's so good at trekking through the wilds. He will actually uh, cleverly avoid some tracks that had you guys otherwise not had his uh, skill. You might have run into some rather nasty looking creatures with paws, paw prints in the snow, maybe the size of Zeria. <laughs> oh, yep. That's my job, keeping you guys from getting killed by the wildlife. It's only the size of Zeria. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> the pop well, there's more. Okay, are we talking there height or tracks at least like five of them? Like Zeria can like take a nap inside the paw print. I oh, do not want to be the first drow to get killed by ice bear. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you <laughs> won't be the first, and won't be the last. We'll try to make sure you survive, though. Greenwood will actually guide you guys up a hill, and then the. Uh, Conveniently, you'll all land basically in a single patch of light where the sun pierces through the fog and the clouds. And you can see down into this valley where it's just covered in these frosty pine trees. Um, Ezra, it's something you've never seen before. You've never seen anything like this, and you've never seen anything so pure and so clean looking, so white. Um, in the center of the valley where two hills meet each other, um, sort of acting as kind of a bottleneck in this uh, sort of in this passageway, you'll see a castle, a run-down castle that shoots up upwards, and it sort of forms a very interesting profile in the distance, where uh, it almost looks like a, a sword inside of a stone, um, or, or a very large, like very large spear, just thrusted into the ground, and it sort of is almost slanted. Hmm. You suspect uh, that this is your destination. The valley looks like it's a few more miles, and then you'll arrive, and you'll be there at about sundown. I don't think we'd want to make camp right outside the keep. That seems like a bad idea. I'd have to agree with that. You want to camp outside here? 
No, we're saying we definitely don't. Well, how far is it away? I say... It's, it's a few miles. Like, it's I it's say... getting close to evening time, and by the time you get there, you'll be close to sunset. Uh, Jorel, oh, could, you, uh, could you maybe look around and see if there's a, a place that's, you know, sort of protected well, didn't we buy you know, from the check. elements? Yeah, I could. A little more uh, hidden away. Mm. Give me a moment. I wish um, check should I make survival or knowledge geography. You can do either. Whatever gives you the most, the most. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Greenwood cuts into the woods, and then he comes back, and he just sort of throws his thumb over his shoulder. I guess, um, Jarrell, you find a uh, uh, a cave that has been um, abandoned by what you believe to be some kind of, of giant. When you went in there, you inspected it, and it looked like it has been abandoned for some, some time. And it looks very safe. Like, you can cut into a hillside, and um, it's almost warm when you go in there. Yep, so I found a cave, large enough to fit a giant. Pretty safe, pretty warm, and definitely looks abandoned. So, no frost giants trying to kill us. Good. We should rest up for the night. That was a long journey. Eh. Don't worry. Yeah. Like I agree with like the I've statement of eh. <laughs> it's like it's like three p.m. and you guys are like, well, we should rest up here. Oh, no, it's it's about five. P.m. It's about dinner time. And considering oh, okay. the icy, but we've been walking probably... in the snow the whole day. We're definitely tired. Well, that and yeah. It's, uh, it's probably we walk on top cold. of the snow, guys. Our boots of the winterlands. We just go right over. We don't even leave tracks. This is why you guys are having such an easy time, is because you invested in those uh, pieces of equipment. And when you go into the cave, there's just one giant bed that all of you think that you could comfortably sleep on. <laughs> Considering this is also the icy north, guys, uh, remember that the further north you get, if it's closer to winter time, it's going to get darker real quick. That's true. Right. Like, dark. Here in Edmonton, it gets dark at 4.30 in the dead of winter, so... Well, yeah, all of you <laughs> huddle, all of you tuck yourselves in in this giant bed. It looks like a, <laughs> like a Christmas painting, a bunch of little babies sharing a bed or something. Elendra's going to uh, be a little uh, squeamish about it, but she's like, it's cold. I can't, I have to find. A a a Ezra takes first look. Ames is actually going to like do the thing where he like sniffs it in circles and sleeps on top of the, <laughs> on top of her. Yeah, he like. Places his face perfectly on somebody. Like, <laughs> yep. Superior's gonna do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, you all will wake up <laughs> and uh, you will uh, travel with, you'll be able to, uh, you sleep throughout the night without well, incident. I was gonna um, say, uh, Ezra only has to, to take watch for two hours because Alandra's got the ring of sustenance, so she only has to sleep for two hours. Yeah. Just saying. So, yeah, you stay, you, uh, Stay awake through the night, reading through maybe your texts, mm -hmm. your uh, scriptures, and then you will, uh, uh, all of you will step out of the cave, and the sunrise sparkles the entire valley. It's really pretty. Um, yeah, that's good storytelling on my part. It's really pretty. Um, <laughs> God, it's so pretty. When you when you when you check to make double sure, the castle is still there. <laughs> Waiting for okay. you. Um, was, was that a concern that it might not take? <laughs> it's gone. It's gone? No, it's not gone. It's there. <laughs> no, it's not gone. Alright, let's do this. Leroy. Let's say we should scalp it first. No. Yeah, let's... Uh, Please, let's... Let, let the scouts go first. The scouts? Yeah. Yeah. The scouts? I'm gonna... Games and Cheryl. Okay. Can Alenda do it too? <laughs> Everybody's scouting except for Zeria. <laughs> Ezra's not scouting. He knows exactly how loud he is. I, I love this image of this like fragile drow just being such a badass like behind Ezra. I'm using stealth synergy with um Eames. Yeah. Um. So I think plus ten, I believe. Okay. So oh, uh, plus eight. Sorry. So thirty. I forgot to set that up, didn't I? Um. Yeah. You roll. You roll. For everybody, and then you add the stacked modifiers for stealth synergy. 
Yeah, so, so it's plus 8 and then plus 13, so it's plus 21, and you rolled an 18, so 21 plus 18, that's 39. You got a 39 on your <laughs> stealth check, so <laughs> no one sees you. And you sneak like securely up to the entrance of this uh, uh, large ruined keep. The front gate is completely broken down. It looks like it had been destroyed in possibly a siege of some kind. Mm. And then you look and you can see inside the courtyard, everything is covered in snow. Everything is completely run down. Um, there's almost no activity here. And you can see across the courtyard an entrance to the main stronghold. These two large wooden doors um, that appear to be uh, maybe about twice as high as, as any of you and they themselves look like they may have been refurbished uh, in the semi-recent past. Like maybe the rest of it looks ancient. These doors look like maybe 20 years old. Mm. Can I send Eames to get a little closer? Sure. So I'll use um, my improved empathic link to um, see through his eyes while he goes for it to see what's closer. Okay, his eyes will kind of glow green a little bit. Yeah. And He'll, just tries to get closer. Ames will sniff around, and through his eyes, you see that he um, can't seem to find any other entrance into the stronghold other than the entrance from the direction which you all are coming from, which was the south. Okay. Are we supposed to have a new uh, new map for it? Or I'm just curious. Yeah. The, you, yes, you will get a new map very soon. Okay. So I, I get Eames to come back to me. I have to realize that there's no other interest. So I can go back to reports what I saw. Yeah, you guys know that there's one entrance into the stronghold. There are other nooks and crannies in the uh, in the uh, ruin itself, but they don't look like they've been traversed of any or anything. They don't look like they have any real value to them. Uh, Zeria, you can see, you can basically confirm everything that I'm saying, and you also see that. Uh, Jarell is pretty much invisible. You reach out with your mind. Um, you how? What's the radius? I guess you could say on that. Sixty feet. Um, you detect the. You can hear the thoughts of all of your fellow party members. Um, you can uh, uh, hear um, Ezra. Like kind of group, like you just all you hear is like lists of food. <laughs> <laughs> We're all I'll, here. I'll, I'll shake theirs. Is there anyone anyone foreign around? No. Okay. It, it seems clear, guys. Mm. So I'm gonna get closer. All right. When you get up to the gate, you uh, you don't detect any thoughts. You it's just a void. When you when you go to listen in on Safiri, when you zero in on her. You hear. Nothing, eh? <laughs> what? What? Sorry, was that a cue for me to think, say something funny? <laughs> no. <laughs> I knew you were going to say anything. Yeah, you don't hear anything when you zoom in. Actually, it's pretty perfect that you said nothing. That yeah, makes it even better. <laughs> that, I, I, after about two seconds, I was like, I guess I'm committed to saying nothing. And I was like, <laughs> Raj just kept waiting. And I was like, should I start now? <laughs> How do you want to? So now we're standing in front of him. I asked, so how do you think we should, the best way to deal with this? And then just going to look at uh, wanna... Ezra and be like, so there's a door. Maybe. Do you want to take the there's whole thing down? There's only one way in. We might as well just go. I mean, do we have to, can we try to like take down the whole building? Because I can destroy the foundation. Destroy the foundation. Well, should, the I, don't, be, I don't think that's the best idea. There might be some valuables inside, I'm just saying. Yeah, remember we're trying to get to an artifact that is presumably inside, and, I mean, I don't Close know what dragon. destroying it will do to the mountain if we are blowing up the soul of the mountain. And there also oh, yeah. might be a pathway from this keep to wherever we need to go. You never know, they might have an underground tunnel because of that stupid worm she's got. That oh, you yeah, destroying the keep would completely block that off, so we should just you know go in and check. Okay, so how are we going to deal with the door? The I'll door, it. it's about <laughs> uh, when you just go to like put your hand on the handle. Um, 
you first thing that happens is there is a loud hush just a very loud <sighs> I don't like the sound of that check for traps check for traps check for traps check for dragons <laughs> and then and then um when you go to open it it doesn't uh, open it you hear like some kind of contraption that's keeping it it's shut something also that could be called a lock <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> thank you for that round of explanation but uh is there any like a sally port or like some sort of smaller door uh like not to your not in this area you can kind of easily look around and see that this building itself looks like it was supposed to serve it was like to serve as like the living quarters of the keep Yo, dog. We heard you like. Door All right. Door. So I'm gonna door. I'm gonna rub my hands together on hearing this contraption that could also be called a lock, um, and I'm just gonna be like, "All right, guys, let's see what we can do about this." I'm gonna take out my tools, and I'm gonna gonna play around with this a little bit, He's gonna and play I'm going to as soon as I find my <laughs> macro for disabled device. Uh, so I should have a plus three to this. Yeah, something like that. Twenty-five. Yep. So, 25, is that good enough to unlock the front door, Raj? Not only do you pop this lock off, this padlock off, but you do it so skillfully that now you have in your possession a masterwork. Let me find it real quick. Where'd it go? This is a masterwork mithril padlock. Okay, oh. that's, that's great. I'll, I'll put it on my I'll put it on my thieves guild locker. <laughs> okay. Let's so see. You uh, them. Yeah, I don't think the thieves guild has lockers. I think that's like a bad idea. <laughs> that, that was a joke. It's not a sustainable <laughs> modus operandi. No, Safiri definitely has one, and it's got all sorts of crazy ass traps inside of it that um, just humiliate whoever tries to get in it. Yeah, you definitely, though, you can see that the door kind of slightly, uh, just by the sheer gravity of it, just kind of swings open a little bit, ready for you guys to to dive in. Uh, I'm going to stick my head in real fast, just look around. Um, what you see is actually very eerie. You see that this is a uh, foyer. And it is lit. I like oh. how you said foyer. It made me really happy because everybody else says foyer, and I hate that. Foyer. Excuse foyer. Us for anglicizing. Foyer. foyer. Now, let me uh, take you guys to a different map. <gasps> new map, new map, new map. New map. I it's like Christmas morning, maps. yes. Here he Ooh. Yay! That's Haunted like Castle. super spooky. It's literally just me. That's <laughs> you good. sticking your head in. Um, uh, what do you I see... Sorry, continue. What you see is this... It's the foyer, obviously. It looks like it is... Um, first thing you notice is an immediate change in temperature. It almost feels just like a cool room temperature. Maybe like 60 degrees, as opposed to the ungodly cold that you uh, have been resisting on the outside. And what you see is basically uh, just in, like, everything that's everything that you see here is sort of accurate to what is actually there. Suits of armor, uh, a large uh, two-door entrance that will lead into the inner keep and every ten feet or so, a uh, wooden, I'm um, wooden, a stone uh, pillar will shoot out from the wall and they are adorned with these uh, torches that seem to be glowing with an unnatural blue flame. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be like, whoa, okay, haunted house shit going on here. Um, and I'm going to sort of gesture to the more magical people that they should, that they should uh, 
check this thing out. Um, somebody sent me a message saying that they were. Yeah, doing I was that. gonna sweep in behind you, just staying close to the wall and scanning the area for magic, using my chameleon ability. That way, I'm all predator style. Yeah. So, uh, Zeria will sneak up behind Safiri and stick in his head, and also, and you'll sort of scan the whole place for magic. Uh, Zeria, you can detect magic everywhere. You are blinded is, by the light of magic. There is an So ear. those torches are coming off real hot. They, they're, they are imbued with some type of alchemical magic, and you can definitely sense all sorts of uh, badness everywhere. Do, do, I, uh, do I pick out any traps on the floors? Do you pick out any traps? You detect no traps. No magical traps, Fury. I'll tell that. The, th- to the the thing that you you do know is that you just you sense it. It's like it's like it's like if you looked at a radar, it would just be just chaos of of blips. It would be nothing but blips everywhere. But it's everywhere in there. They're in the room, man. They're in the room. I don't know why they're not in the room. Okay. Does uh, well, trusting my own intuition, then I'm gonna step into the room uh, and sort of beckon the others to come in too. Does anybody okay. else like suddenly have a flashback to space balls? <laughs> Blips all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> Our radar's jammed. Sorry. <laughs> and then jam starts oozing. Yes. Such a good movie. It is. It was a great movie. Uh hang on. I'm gonna move everybody onto the map, and before we do anything else, I'm actually we're gonna do something very fun and very exciting. We're gonna roll initiative. Oh boy! <laughs> Wait, it goes to Siri. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, oh my god, the initiative already killed him, what? <laughs> <laughs> no wonder nobody returns, they step in the door and poof. Yes. <laughs> End of gone. Whatever, what is, what's I knew that, this was coming. What's that 4th edition thing where you touch it and it root takes your arm off or whatever? Um, It's some kind of, kind of D&D famous artifact. All right, so uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, first off, Ezra, that's not you. Thomas, Reyna. All right, so Alendra, did you just roll initiative? Yes, you did. Yeah, I did. Everybody, click on your tokens and roll initiative. Holy shit, Ezra, you got a good initiative. What this is, <laughs> um, you're not acting. It's a fear you didn't. <laughs> you're not acting uh, that you know of in combat. You don't see anything immediately. Um, I need two of you to roll initiative. Yeah, I had to reload. Friggin' uh, accidentally went back with the oh, mouse. Max, Max are real touchy. Yeah. It's true. What am I missing? Uh, we're missing. Raw. Raw and Zeria. I'm just gonna roll for him. This isn't that kind of initiative. Oh, Sorry about that. Right? I was I was I was fully expecting like, you know, like Final Fantasy music to start playing, you know? Yeah, I was expecting the suits of armor to, you know, <laughs> come here and kick our ass. Start oh, doing um, actually, uh here. Sean Sean, you have initiative if you want to tell me what you do. I'll uh I'll definitely uh check out the suits of armor that are there. The uh floor as I take a step over here and creep over in this way and then peek around. Okay. You can uh, roll perception for me. These two suits of armors are massive in size. They're maybe a head taller than uh, Ramir, and they wield two great swords. Um, and they just sit there sort of standing on ceremony. Uh to sort of demonstrate strength to whoever it is that's coming in. And nothing magical about him, eh? Well, you see him's magic everywhere. There's magic, like, uh-huh. you can sense it just... It, there's no clear beat on anything. Mm. There's so much, so much going on here that over the course of time, uh, the sense magic is just overwhelming. Your eyes roll back in your heads when you do it. Uh, Jarrell. So, Jarrell's gonna go over this side and creep over here. Okay. Get it. He was like, follow him. Okay. And I'm just gonna actually just look at this lamp. Like, examine it. Okay. Uh, do you want to, uh, roll perception for me? Cool. 
Um, okay. Um, you can inspect it, and on the back, not only do you read uh, a little plaque that says Made in the Far East, um, you also wow. read on it that it is an ever-burning torch. <laughs> Does it come off the wall? Uh, it's it's it, it looks like you might you might be able to make a sleight of hand or disabled de- I'm sorry disabled device to uh, mm. if you want to take it. It's it's that mm, made. Yeah, it is kind of too made. They're, <laughs> they're useful though. They're useful. <laughs> but I don't have sleight of hand or like disabled device. So I'm just leaving alone. We can come can, back home later. You, you can roll decks if you want to. If not, I'll go to Ezra. I'm gonna do a, a dungeoneering check. Okay. Ooh, that gets me some good stuff. Twenty-three. Dungeoneering. We'll do twenty-three. Um, with a twenty-three, you don't have any just any kind of general like idea about like maybe what the stone is made out of. Sure. What the doors look like. Ah, uh, okay. Like what they kind of made of that kind of stuff. It's... Engineering can't get me like too much about what's in here, but at least can it give me an idea about structure. Yeah, it looks like it was uh, built by dwarves. You you uh, have enough um, knowledge of dwarves to know that that's a matter of fact, and that um, the structure in and, in and of itself um, was designed for human inhabitants, but um, this particular area of this uh, of this this dungeon is well kept and it's sort of as opposed to what you saw outside um, not worn down uh, time has barely touched it supernaturally all right and then you know I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna move forward a little bit okay Alendra. Uh, Alendra is going to. Mm, mm, she's she's really wary about those those things of armor, uh, but I think she's going to try and do uh, knowledge arcana sure. on them. Not like get all my skills. Specifically on the suits of armor. Yes. Sure. Okay. Not a bad roll. Oh, it's a good roll. Using your uh, discernment, you determine that all, with all the magic going on in here, that Zeria is just losing his mind over um, that these suits of armor are <laughs> actually not imbued with any type of menacing magics. So they're not like constructs or anything. Well, that w- you would not know that. Oh. With a knowledge arcana. What would give me the knowledge that I need then to know like what kind of magic it is? That's uh, engineering. Okay. For you to discern. Well, she what... means like a magical construct, not like a, oh no, a they're not construct. No, they're not. They're not magical constructs. No. Cool. Um. So with that, she's also going to do a thing. Okay. Um. She's going to. Uh. Cast bless. Okay. So everybody gets plus one attack rolls and saves against fear. That would come in handy. Hmm. Oh. All right, Ramir. Uh, basically, all I'm going to do is step up and brace for anything that pops out if it okay. does. Show me where you step. We're level okay. five, right? Or are we level six? Because you're level six. six. Okay. And then we're down to Sephiri. Come and knock on our door. So I'm going to walk up to this door and inspect it. All right. This is what happens. Sephiri marches past Ralmir and Ezra happily. And when she steps here, something happens. You didn't check for traps. Safiri springs a trap. All of a sudden, through the floor, everywhere, razor-sharp spears of ice shoot 
and just fill the room. And all of you are skewered by these thin spears of ice. We don't get a reflex save? You do. You get you a do, reflex. But you're for, gonna take damage anyway. You get a reflex for half. So everybody make a reflex save. Yay. What up? Be- <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> hey! Manfrawl, Jesus! Yes, if you beat A20, then you would take uh, six damage. And if you, oh, do you round up in Pathfinder? I'm sorry, you yeah. take five damage. There oh, we go. Really? No, you round down. You always round down. Uh, you'll take five damage. If you do not beat a 20, you will take 11 cold damage. So, three of us. Ouch. Mm, thanks a lot for that, Safiri. <laughs> thanks, really. I'm just bobbing my head like, yeah, no problem. It was fun. <laughs> that was fun. What, you couldn't avoid that? You weren't fast enough for that? So you guys will uh, be skewered and then um, basically these uh, draconic looking ghastly teal runes will sort of come up um, from this entire row where Safiri is standing and then they'll disappear and fade away. Well, let's hope that's the last time that happens. Perhaps so I am going to subtly, but not so subtly, go, huh, that looked like a magical trap. I wonder why I didn't notice a magical trap. And I'm going to glare at the two casters. <laughs> I'm focused <laughs> on the armor. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Do I have the rest of my turn still? Or, or did that effectively end my turn? Right? Uh, you can still move up to the door and do whatever. Thanks. I'm going to I'm going to just do a quick look at the door. Is it locked? Uh the door um appears door to have a, is a jaw. A lock on it. Okay. And let's unlock this shit. Yep. Check for traps. As soon as first. I find the max. Oh, it's not called thievery in this game. It's called disable device. There we go. Uh, it's a 20. Uh, oh wait, no. So when no. you put your hands on the door, you hear And then the whole room fills with those icy spears. (laughs) Oh my god. (sighs) Well, I don't save. (laughs) Ezra, you eat a spear of ice. Oh my god. Jorrell doesn't save either. (laughs) Yes. Oh, shocking. Safiri makes the reflex save. Also to be shocking, fair, before today, I haven't made a single reflex save. <laughs> I've like crit failed everyone. So after this next round of ice, Elendra's going to just be like, Are you fucking kidding me? But did I un- unlock the door? No. <laughs> Damn. All right, let's check for traps. From now on, Safiri, please, for the love of God, check for traps first. We're going to go through please. all of our heal spells before we even get... Into this it's, fucking place. It's a magical trap. Do you know how much good Safiri trying to do an Arcana check would be? Do you, Negative uh, good. You just you just do a perception check and you'll see runes. I mean, I assume that wait, wait isn't detect arcane traps an uh, like knowledge Arcana or an Arcana check in this? Not perception. No, if it's or, a trap, it's a perception. Yeah, check. if it's a trap, it's perception. What? Welcome to Who this game. Just, just, just go there. Uh. Anyway, anyway. Roger's just like, come on, guys. <laughs> yes, I'm going for a TPK. I'm going to channel energy again. Mark, yep. mark that for two now for today. Okay. Oh, wait, so that earlier five was all of us getting healed? Yep. It was everybody getting healed? or just as Oh, yeah, everybody getting healed. Okay. So then we heal for and... another two? One more time for a total of six. How much damage did we just take, Raj, on the failed reflexes? Total was 18 for everyone. Yeah, the total was 18 for everybody. Except for, yeah. Yeah, Mm mm-hmm. There's a reason why people don't like halflings. 
Safiri, you're now standing before the door. It still has the padlock on it. I'm going to walk over there and just... Are there any more arcane runes around the door? Roll perception. Okay. <laughs> so you ex examine the room and you do not detect any um, arcane runes of any kind. And... Does the door look trapped? Does the door look trapped? You do not detect any more traps on the door. I'm going to pop over and climb up the armor. Open a ways, Fury. <laughs> the armor will come to life. Ah, oh, shit. No, I'm kidding. I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it starts rocking. It's the sort of shit I would do, Rod. <laughs> No, uh, Safiri, I'm waiting for you. Everybody's waiting for you to do something. Oh, I, I made a check. I assumed that was the end of my turn, but now I will try to disable it again. There we go. You're too busy. Yeah, you're busy being skewered. Okay, so now you're, um, the door will be unlocked, and you've collected another padlock. Not quite as nice. This is a masterwork padlock. That was what the last one was. The last one was made of Mithril. Oh my god. Indestructible um, elven Can't steel. I can't find that on the equipment list, but okay, I'll work on that. Thank you. Is the door made of wood? Yes. Well, we have somebody who can take care of that. <laughs> so, you will open the door, and you will look just down. You'll just kind of carefully peek your head in, and you'll see basically a well-lit room that it's just a hall that comes all the way up to here. And then it sort of shoots off in these two directions. That is literally... Ooh! Empty. Ooh! I know this one. Hold on. It was in my... It was in my... Uh, um, intel. We're to go west. The west side of the keep is what we're looking for. I hear And silence. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, that's... Uh, I can't make any... You know, what can we say about that? It's just good enough for, for, for me, I mean. I'm just waiting for you to check sure more traps. You can lead the way, Safiri. Because that's worked so well so far. Fine, while I'm standing there at the doorway, I'll look to see if I see any traps. 24. You detect no traps. Doesn't mean they're not there. Okay, so I'm gonna go up here. Stop. Do I detect any creatures? <laughs> you can't move that far. <laughs> and I just let him get up there and he's like, stop! <laughs> you right. trigger another trap. Ames, he did say the whole building was a trap. Ames, right? Ralmir, Zyria, and Safiri will all be blasted with just from the floor. This just mass of white, freezing razor blade smoke shoots up from the ground, and I'm it just like the uh, statue. <laughs> the statue. That's why I stand with it. I'll give you a plus one on your reflex save because you're up on the armor. <laughs> uh, hang on. All right, that's that's you four. Everyone else, you're actually safe, safe distance away from this. Foggy cloud of smoke. Uh, hallelujah for that. Oh. Cool, evasion's a thing. Everybody but Zyria has evasion. <laughs> so, Ralmir and yeah, Zyria, you will all take 14 cold damage. Damn, Zyria's, Zyria's soft. He's a squishy <laughs> little drow. Um, Safiri, when you uh, come down, to, or when you come down to the end of the hall, You'll, I'll reveal to you what you see. Um, no one else can see this because they're all still in the room, just hiding, scared to death. Is he just channeling energy now? That's the rest of it. Okay. How far close are you? Everybody gets it. Okay, I was going to make sure because last time I wasn't in, this, I wasn't in range. Um, you will see a door here and here. And I'm sorry, I didn't have my little arrows. I forgot them. <laughs> I know. Also, keep in mind, if anybody wants to just 
move your guy along. I'm, I can see where everybody is, and I know where all the traps are, so I'll just kind of watch you guys. Ezra is standing back because with the track record Safiri has so far. Yup. <laughs> That's why I'll understand back to you. <laughs> Okay, so she's having a shit him. ton of fun. Look at the look on her face. <laughs> look at her. <laughs> I will climb Damn higher it. up on the statue to get away from the Damn floor. you, child. Yeah, you're like on top of his head. Damn you, child. Stop with the traps. Be effective. Don't make me cast whole person on you. Safiri, uh, you're kind of on point at this point. What do you I'm want still do? on point, okay, because we're in turn order, and I've taken, like, four actions. God damn it! I come here and stop, or aim to stop you. From you moving. gotta remember, we're not actually in turn order, this is more for just keeping us track. Yes, yeah, I mean, Grab you. okay, so, before I keep doing random shit, does anyone else actually want to do anything? Greenwood's yeah. trying to hold me back. First of all, Sefiri, you need to start looking with your step first. I did! I looked! I looked really hard! <laughs> Apparently not. Uh, Child, can move to the end. he knows Sefiri, you did wrong. Sefiri sticks her daggers in her fists, so she is flipping him the metallic bird. Um, oh, I'm so scared. Elendra's gonna be doing perception checks as they go through the halls, just because, you know, it doesn't help to have another pair of eyes. Okay. So I'm going to since I have a child. Since I have checked for traps, I'm gonna go west. Hang on. What part of you tra oh, sorry. Are Wait. You Lendra, you don't detect any traps from where you are. Safiri, what was your roll? Twenty four for traps. Okay, you don't detect any traps. Thanks. Would anyone like guidance? <laughs> no. Did I take guidance? I guidance myself. I, I also took guidance. Yeah, I did. Thanks. Okay. Are we good? Anyone else want to do anything before I kill us all? Yeah, Just let me ahead, to make It'll sure. be fun. We'll all die in a you know a wonderful you know we'll be you know the party of popsicles. We'll die. Well, I see anything. Okay. okay. All right. Hang on, everybody. Stop. 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 Greenwood, you detect these very carefully concealed traps. They How are many? little frosty teal draconic sigils embedded in the stone. They're so subtle that it's like almost impossible to see them. Right here. And right here. Ah. So, stop it, child. And you're currently grappled also, because I know Eames beat you and has grappled you. He has you in your mouth, his mouth. Um, so, first off, before you move forward, there, I point out the sigils to, to the um, halfling as Eames carries over. In points of the sigils, these are traps. This, this is what's been set. You've been setting off all this time. You're like a manager at a fast food restaurant. <laughs> I have to see that. Yes, you have time to lean. You have time to spot traps. <laughs> yes, if you want to do this, look out for these, because I do not want to get stabbed again. Okay. All right. I will. I will say that now that you have identified the kind of trap that it is and the kind of what to look for that that's really good role play greenwood um you will have a plus two everyone will have a plus two on their perception checks when it comes to these tra kinds of traps okay no because they are you do know that they are very subtle they're like really well hidden in the stuff formations on the stone okay so eans would now let you go you need to disable them, please. Don't kill us all again. Wait, wait. Don't Does kill us disable all. device work for magical traps? Uh, you have to have trap yeah, finding. Yeah, yes. You've done this before. Oh, you're right, I did. All right, so I'm going to jump on his shoulders. I would recommend we no, all stand kidding. back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, to... Yeah, I'm definitely Greenwood moving back. Here. All right, folks, stand clear. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to somersault out of Eames's mouth. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then... <laughs> Then I'm going. <laughs> Guys, I'm not defusing a nuclear warhead. <laughs> Zeria is going to toss me guidance, so that's a plus one to this disabled device. That is a 34. All right, these sigils, you'll sort of peel them up 
you know, carefully, like, you'll chip away at a piece of it until it no longer says what it was originally saying, and it will sort of float up from the stone, and it will disappear. Uh, and you'll do that very thoroughly and very carefully, and this trap is now disabled. Today I learned that is it clear trap. yet? You done? Peel and stick. <laughs> Safini, are done. you dead? I'm going to, I'm going to, as by, by way of checking, uh, do a cartwheel across it. Okay. Whee! And I'm, then I'm going to look at this door. Uh, it's a uh, iron, rusty iron door that has a handle. Uh, it looks like it turns as opposed to like uh, it looks. It almost looks like a modern door handle, um, in a, in like a like a asylum or something. And it looks like it has been installed semi recently. Um, it will uh, be about the size of a normal looking door, and it looks rather sturdy. Um, and it does, in a fact, have. One. A, Make sure you look for traps on this one, please. It does have a lock on it, and it is. Uh, it, it looks like a keyhole that's embedded in the door. You can't just pop it and take it. I rolled I'm a surprised I could do that for the past two. I rolled a twenty-five to check for traps. You don't detect any traps. Doesn't mean they're not there. <laughs> is there still <laughs> not there? For, for roles like, like that, I really wish they could I'm be done without, like, player knowledge so you don't know how badly you, like, fail or succeed. It's okay. Right. Uh, yeah, so I'm that. going to, I'm going to, since Alundra says, I don't see any traps on that, loudly she says it, I'm going to unlock the door. Okay. There yes. we go. That's wow. a 35. Ooh, so this is what happens. <laughs> we all die. <laughs> While you are unlocking it, you are on the ball so much that you're actually able to detect the trap on the door and disable it while you're disabling the lock. The door is unlocked. Oh, so I, <laughs> I glare angrily at Safiri and just yell, suck it, nerds. Safiri. <laughs> I know, right? You mean a lender. That's what I do, darling. I was going to say, you, you Whatever. glared at yourself? I was, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, you just glared at yourself. Look, it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been throwing ice spears at all my teammates. You know, it hasn't exactly been the day I was hoping it would be. So here we go. I found a room, which is no doubt riddled with traps, and I'm going to strongly <laughs> suggest that if Alendra is so sure about the, her trap site, that she go first. I'm Jarell, sorry. Could, could you, you take could a look in the next room, room, please? Jarell. Yeah, no. Give me a moment. I was something happened. Phone call. So I push the small child aside, and I'm gonna perceive what I can see. <laughs> okay, you detect no traps. Doesn't mean they're not there. Hmm. But he's giving us feedback. Sorry. How dare? It's gone now. How dare you, sir? Now it's back. Uh, yeah, Greenwood detects no traps. I don't see anything. Anybody else want to take a try? Hey, Sophia. Oh, oh, hell, just let me through. I walk in. Yay! Stop! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is what happens. is Ezra is going to step in. And become and a popsicle. While he is... Uh, Stepping in, he'll trip over a little tiny wire. He's actually stepped on these before, and he immediately recognizes what he's done. And he is horrified as he looks to the left. A giant sickle of ice. And when I say sickle, I mean like the tool. So razor sharp that he almost can't see it. It's so thin that it's almost invisible. Will just slice across his body. Uh, Ezra, make a reflex save for me. Reflex or die. Okay. Uh, you. Oh damn. All right. So you do not save. No. This thing just rips through your tender flesh, and it deals thirty-three points of Holy damage. Oh what? God, what? Oh, I'm really glad there's, I didn't go first. That's a lot. Especially since he rolled three. There's uh, three ones in that. Moderate, or cure moderate wounds on him. 
I'm surprised that was three ones in it, and it was still high. Oh, Andrew, you 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 put Ezra's two halves back together, and then you cast <laughs> Cure Moderate Wounds. It's a really powerful heal. That's as good as a heal as it gets. Yep. Oh, no, that was unpleasant. Are you, you, you I was ridiculous. Ezra's face was like hanging off of him. That was a lot of blood. <laughs> I do believe I was almost sculpted. Hmm. Well, at least we save your hair. Did did the the did the Wait, is my hair sickle perfect? reset right? though? No, it just hangs there. I think you might oh. have gotten a haircut. It's extremely heavy looking. It looks like it's like oh. twenty times your weight. <laughs> well, I weigh like six and a half pounds. Uh... Oh well, then it's like a hundred times. I think we should crawl through doorways now. <laughs> Sorry. Hang on. Ezra, you want to keep going? <laughs> uh, Do does anybody any happen to have, you know, like a, a, a large stick of some kind, you know, a 10 foot pole perhaps? Just reduce everything to the 10 foot pole. <laughs> I've, got, I've got this bag of bag of rodents I've been carrying around for a while. I'm not sure what I was meant to do with it. Did you say bag of rodents? That's what I said. I'm, I'm not a nature person. I don't know what kind of rodent they are. They could be fucking guinea pigs. Oh I'll check God. to make sure, or I'll just summon a pack of dire rats. Whichever one makes the best. Okay, hang on. Who's up for summoning a pack of dire rats to check for traps? Uh, okay, so the dice roll, um, Alendra, you don't see any traps. That son of a ball sack. That's a new one for me. God, son of a ball sack. Zeria, you shake your head, but that doesn't involve a roll. That is a free action, and you succeed. So, <laughs> good job. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm sick of this stupid shit. Uh, oh shit, do I really have? Oh good. Uh, I'm going to walk up to where Ezra is being sliced apart. I'm going to do a quick check, and then I'm just gonna start walking around the room. Yeah, there we go. There's a 17 for traps. You don't feel like you are able to. You don't feel like you did a great job when it comes to this I, level of traps, but yeah. uh, you don't detect any. That's fine. Uh, I don't care. I'm just like, whatever. You know, someone else will just spot it. I'm going to go look at the door. And I don't okay. reach her in time. Awesome. Stop. <laughs> right? Stop. <laughs> uh, everybody, Stop. hang on. Safiri time. <laughs> no. So what will happen is, is the... Wait, I didn't cross that space. I did it this way. Okay. So you stop Thank there. You. It's adjacent. It's fine. You will step on what uh, what you thought was just a you know plain piece of ground, and the uh, runes that you've been bumping into over and over will light up. Only this time, they are not uh, teal blue; they are blood red, a very bright, intense red, and fists will shoot through the ground. These fists that appear to be human bone and are animated <laughs> shoot through the ground and these humanoid skeletons will arise clad in ancient Nordic chainmail wielding very ancient rusty looking weapons and they're going to attack you. So what I'm going to do yes. is I'm going to uh, delete this initiative I'm actually going to place these guys um, on the map. So hang on. i got to change layers because I'm so not skilled at this part. So I go like this. And then layer token. All right. Everybody grab your token. And you are going to roll initiative. How in hell? Do I, have, I have never rolled above a five for initiative in your campaign, Raj. Very uh, bad. Uh, uh, Very awful. All right, so everybody looks like they rolled. I'm going to put everybody in order. I love the names of your things. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of awesome. I think it's kind of awesome. So this evil, menacing creatroid is going to just do a runner at the thing that awoke him from his peace 
and he's going to skewer it with a very nasty looking spear for 11 damage. And then our formerly faceless hero, Ezra, will spring into action. I will charge straight at the thing that just hit the fury. Okay. By the way, after this encounter, I vote for a quick break. Okay. I agree. And straight up to the face. Okay. Um, you will hit him. You'll hit him once. Ezra, you notice something when you swing your sword and you thwack him with it. Um, your sword, it seems like he's kind of not affected as much by the blade. His hard bone, he doesn't feel any pain or anything from it. Oh, then that'll be it. fine. I'll do, uh, as a free action, I'll put my sword away and grab out my warhammer. Yes. Ready for the next round. Um, so, but you will do the damage, the damage from lightning, he will take full damage from that, and then he'll just reduce some of that, some of that tasty sword damage. So that's going to be... And then Greenwood. Yeah, skellies don't seem to give a shit about slicing or piercing. So I give, like, a, um, whistle to Eames, who charges... He can. can you charge plans, everybody? Oh, whatever. Oops. He just comes <laughs> closer. Through, uh, through friendly spaces, I think. I think yeah. you can. Some people say you can't. Well, he just moves up anyway. He still has 50 foot like speed, sure. so he comes here. And he tries to attack this skeleton. That would be a fun conundrum to figure out if you couldn't move through each other. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Uh, he's he a misses. nimble little guy. He misses... While he walks past, I slowly come forward and start taking pot shots at some of these guys. Okay. Blue up to the arrows. Because oh, okay. Just cause. Those are things. Because they're things. Sure. Um, okay. Let's see. So, yes. And because they're blunted, um, they actually do a little bit more damage than the bladed ones would. Yep. Good tactics. Ziri's all the way in the back room. Like, Look at where he is. What's going on? Look at where he is. <laughs> Alright, Ziri, are you going to do anything? Sean. Sorry, I forgot I was muted. I sense they're in trouble. I'm always in their head. I will move up, doing a double move action, and uh, check out the situation. Yeah, you'll you'll see everything that you see. M move, move where you're going to... Okay. Yeah, you'll see the chaos that's going on that in the next room. Kind of there is a shitstorm. I'm always yes. in their heads. This evil creature is going to run here and begin to scratch at this wolf. He's going to miss. And it's Ralmir. Oh I'm going to roll magic. up on that guy who just started scratching him and punch him right in his face. <laughs> Okay. Uh, oh my. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now your feet, your fists do type B damage, right? Yep. So he's gonna take it all. Yes. Break a skull, Ral. You can do it. All right. This creature is gonna actually scoot right here and to shoot an arrow at Eames. And miss. It wouldn't do much damage anyway. Alendra. Uh, Alendra is going to check her spells real quick so she doesn't fuck up. And <laughs> then she's going to move in here. Okay. Uh, from this spot to here. Sure. Sure. Just so that there's no confusion about movement and blah blah blah. It's just uh, fine. Then she's gonna smack at it with her morning star. Okay. Uh, for some reason, it's not letting me roll, so I'm just gonna roll a one d twenty. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's gonna miss anyway, so I'm not even gonna bother adding my strength mod. All right, it misses. Safiri, poor little Safiri, having the worst time of her life. Oh, she's having a she's having a fucking ball right now. 
This is so much fun. Although she is excited about actually fighting stuff. All right, so she's going to shift here. Stop. I'm sorry, she's going. You trigger. <laughs> Jesus Christ. A trap. God oh. dang it. Man. Everybody, except for Zeria, Woo! Gets, to make, gets to make a reflex save. That's my archer right there. Woo! <laughs> oh, Lord. Hey! Okay. Hang on. All right. So what happens... That wasn't that wasn't supposed to be. Oh yeah, that's right. So what happens is this room gets filled with red light, and then it's filled with a void of sorrow and misery and death. Was this a fear trap? Uh, no, no, okay. you're not feared. I mean, you should be afraid, but it doesn't mechanically have that attached to it but um you all are hit with a blast of necrotic um if you dodged it you if you beat a 20 then you take 11 damage and if you don't beat a 20 you take 21 points of damage ow when Safiri, is it like a type of disease or anything like that? It's not yeah. a disease. It's just right. an evil power source. It's just an evil right. energy. Negative energy Yeah, blast. it's just negative energy. So it will sh- blast you all, and you'll notice that these bony, nasty, wicked creatures look like they're almost healed by it. Mm-hmm. And they actually... Get a lot of their health back. Damn it, child. All the rest of you moved around the room willy-nilly, but as soon as I step anywhere... <laughs> All right, Sphiri. You're, 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 now that you've triggered the trap, you may spend okay. your... You're not stopped so if you want to keep going. It wasn't mishap damage or anything? Uh, yes. If you beat a DC 20, you took 11 damage. 11. Yes. And, yeah, and we you, asked, we're asking the three of us to have um, evasion, that's why. What's that? Okay. Three of us have evasion, that's all he was asking. Well, oh. I, I thought the rogue had uncanny dodge, but maybe not at this level. Oh, fuck, what does uncanny dodge do? <laughs> it prevents him from sneak attack, that's what uncanny dodge does. Evasion prevents him, allows him to save and take no damage. I thought it was the opposite, but okay. Oh, I do have evasion. You can avoid damage. If you make a successful reflex save against a thing, you instead take no damage. Oh, well, I should not be taking damage from this stuff. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, but again, I'm not, used to rogues having, I'm not used to rogues having all this weird shit. All right, so now for the <laughs> shit I do actually know how to use. Uh, I'm going to stab this mofo, and I'm flanking with Alendra, which is really nice. Yes. Uh, so, you don't uh, plus two, no damage mod. There we go. That's a whopping five damage. And since I'm here, I'm going to make a full reaction attack. Full action attack, mm-hmm. not reaction. Um, this will be with flanking, so it'll only be at a plus one because I have uh, just the other thing. So that's five damage. No damage bonus there. Um, I missed the second attack, but I still get to sneak attack once. How do you miss no the second attack? And so that's another thirteen. You don't miss the second attack. Bless yes, I do, because I already added sneak attack in. Look, I rolled no, the no, two. No, 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 no. What? Hold on. Okay, I, so that I already 14, added in. That 14 versus mm-hmm. 16, you get a plus two to that because you're flanking him. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is what happens. It's already added in. Oh, yeah. seriously? It, it, okay. you, you, yeah. you stab him, right? You stab away at him. You actually do hit him. Unfortunately you are unable to do sneak attack damage because this creature doesn't have any vital organs. He doesn't have anything that you could actually sneak into and, and kill. All right, well, I am totally worthless this fight, so <laughs> there's nothing I can do. Um, I know that feel, I'm bro. Just gonna, I'm just 
All right, well, I'm just going to fucking chill then. I'm just probably... Do they have total defense in this game? Safiri, <laughs> Safiri throws her daggers down. Yeah, she has total defense. She throws a fit. You can do just total defense. She's like, fuck this noise. <laughs> That is that is essentially essentially what I will do for the rest of the encounter. Okay, uh, that's all I gotta say. That was a full action. All right. So this creature is going to attack um, Safiri with his nasty spear and deal ten mm. damage. And then it's Ezra with his mighty warhammer. Pound on it. Okay. Wow. You crack him. That one doesn't hit. <laughs> you do some nice damage, though. And that one doesn't hit. Okay. So... Then it's Greenwood. Okay. Eames is going to attack the one that's right in front of him. Yep. And that guy. He misses. Oh, I'm oh sorry, guys. God, no. You guys are really having the worst time of your life, aren't you? <laughs> and because I'm kind of mad that I'm back, back to full health, I'm going to give a shout. Okay. Yes, Hunter's Howl. All enemies within the 20 foot maze makes DC 14 will. Yeah, might as well. Sure. Make them all my favorite enemies. Animated. Huh. <laughs> I love to laugh. Okay, two of them know, are now rolling 17 for undead will saves. <laughs> um, Which ones are they? This is going to be, uh, let's see, so Patella is the archer, so I'll just give him a mark. And then Lumbar is this one. <laughs> I mean, it, I need to name them things because it gets really confusing. I understand. So, after that, it's our <laughs> very safe, all the way back, Zyria. Zyria will step forward, summoning up her whole, his heavenly fire. And s- his or her heavenly fire. <laughs> his or her heavenly fire. <laughs> With a ranged touch attack. Zyria does a perception check on Zyria's genitals. <laughs> what type of uh, magic? There are that? none. You don't see any. Well, that's a 19 because it's a blast. Gender fluid for the win. What kind of magic is that? Uh, it's holy fire. Okay, so that's going to just do some serious damage. And here we go. Its head just wobbles around. Yeah, it, it looks like it's in... nine holy fire, so it may probably take 18. I don't you know. Did a, no, no, you did a lot. You did... I know, I know what's going on. You did a lot of damage. Wait, what are the skulls? It, it says it's uh, Greenwood's favored enemy marker. Yeah. That yell he did makes them his favorite enemy if they failed their right. save and these two did they, they, they blah 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 they failed right. well, Mayor, I, I missed that. This, sorry. this creature is going to start to claw at your eyes with its nasty claw hands it's like sharpened finger bones so the first one will hit you and the second one will miss For, hold on hey, is, back. Armor, is armor still on these area Yes, armor is still on you. It lasts a, for a very a long plus time. Four, uh, plus four DCs for the first one. <laughs> Holy crap. Hey, you're my favorite person to cast on. You need the art. <laughs> it's your turn. Uh, I'm going to make a flurry of blows attack against uh, Femur or whatever the hell his name is. Okay. Sir Bones a lot. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just call him Bone Dust. <laughs> so this is what happens. There's Ramir. Like does the Popeye knuckles, and he just <laughs> un- unloads, <laughs> and then this thing just basically pops into a pile of bones and just scatters everywhere, all over the walls and all over the floor, which triggers a trap. <laughs> oh Jesus! No, it doesn't. It doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I would so Raj, at this point, you're just we're we're just sort of fatalistic. We're about it. We're just like, oh fuck, another trap. Okay, you guys, need, that. You guys oh. need you need to feel something during this campaign. You guys have had it so easy. All right, Patilla. Is the I haven't. I've gone through this before. Uh, Fatella's going to shoot a longbow at Eames and miss again. Every every can't encounter, I have somebody who just is worthless. <laughs> Some ranged bad guy who's worthless. Alendra, the holy. 
Alendra the Holy is going to um she's gonna probably smack the thing with her thing again. Let me okay. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Oh <laughs> my. You do have flanking, as in tactical flanking, but right. these things don't have organs that you can sneak a dagger into, so you can't do the sneak damage. Well, I don't do sneak damage anyway. Sneak attack is right. just a rogue thing. Right. Well, Alendra does There's everything. There's a character that doesn't. Uh, go ahead and make an attack. Roll. You're doing some kind of custom thing, right? Okay. The so, two is for the strength bonus that I've got, and then the other two is for the flanking bonus. Okay. So that's going to be a plus two to your 1d8, so you actually do three damage instead of one there, Goober. Well, by Ed. So you do and some nice... And it doesn't get halved? It doesn't get halved because it's a, it's a hammer. It's a blunt weapon. That's a, that's a thing that they got rid of for fourth edition, Matt. Like when they, when they did 4e, they got rid of... Blunt for skeletons. Skeleton. Non lethal blunt depth weapons and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, Sphere throwing a temper tantrum. What do you want to do? Alright. Yeah, so oh I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my temp temper tantrum. I'm gonna continue to do that. Um and then <laughs> I guess there's not really anything in terms of cover around here. You can hide um, Ezra. There are these there are these pots. There's Ezra, of course. <laughs> you could Marshall probably pots. you could probably fit in one. Don't Take another and, step. and there are no defender marks, so there's nothing to prevent opportunity attacks. Okay. <laughs> can't can't do a handle animal check on him. <laughs> I am going to try to disguise myself as a standard action as part of the wall. Okay. He becomes one with the go. wall. <laughs> okay. There we go. Does it all of a sudden, Spawn's cloak like wraps around him out of nowhere, and he just becomes the wall. I, I see the the gif of Homer just like slinking back into the hedge. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very quickly, um, you. This seems like something that would provoke an attack of opportunity. So the skeleton's gonna get to skewer you while you do it, and then, and then oh after dealing God. fifteen oh, damage. Oh wow. After dealing 15 damage, he'll forget about you, and then he'll be like, oh, it's just a wall there. And then you trigger a trap. <laughs> That's, oh, that was so totally worth it. You're, you're on fire because you are next to the torch. No, you're not. You're, you're fine. Actually, Raj, at this point, you know. <laughs> you drop aggro from the skeleton, and you are now disguised as the wall. And the skeleton, because you've got... I'm gonna delete this. I'm sorry. I like I like to do that to make fun of one rollers. Um, he's actually gonna spear Ezra. He's gonna try and spear the human. No, he misses. Ooh, does he lose his spear? No, he does not. Aw. No, in fact, he has two now. Does he accidentally get his <laughs> wow. stuck in the wall, aka me? <laughs> no, he doesn't see you. Ezra's nice, gonna Ezra. destroy this thing. All right, so you hit him. You hit him three times. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Do I even need to count that up? <laughs> <laughs> crushed it. It's like, and then I will take a five foot step. That's thirty damage yeah. you just did. Yeah, he did a ton of damage. Very good. Everybody's in my way. Greenwood, don't worry about that. I don't care about that. Yeah. Four, uh, uh, four E for life. Swing around, around behind him for flanking reasons. Sure. Oh. Eames will attack him. And he misses. Misses. And I'm going to go and try to kill him. All my attacks for the net. And only the second one hits. Second one will hit for 11, but it's actually, blunt. Actually, actually, all of them hit. I get plus two from coordinated shot and plus two for favored. That's right, because he's favored. Mm. Yeah, you kill him. So, you guys have concluded this encounter, and these very powerful skeletons all are now scattered across the uh, the room. You inspect their weapons, and you see that the, their weapons really aren't of much value. They're very ancient, and they're very rusty and nasty looking. So what we're going to do 
is we are going to uh, kind of do a little cliffhanger thing. And we'll say Safiri. What's that? I said we're going to get our tetanus shots. Yes, and uh, we're going to take a, a short break. It's 8 o'clock where I am, so let's come back at uh, 8.15. Let's come back in 15 minutes. All right. Sweet. Awesome. So, I'm going to end the call, and then I'll restart it uh, in a minute. Sounds good. I'm going to end the stream for the uh, for the break, and we'll be back in 15 minutes. Thank you so much for people who have been watching so far. If you have to take off, we will uh, we will you know we appreciate you stopping by and hanging out. And uh, for those who are sticking around, we'll see you in 15 minutes.